Hello? Jeremy, where are you? I'm getting a drink. What are you, trying to micromanage me or something? Jeremy, I understand you're going through a lot, but you're making the staff uncomfortable. What? Everybody's having a great time. Why are you trying to ruin it? I'm not trying to ruin anything. We've gotten four complaints along tonight of you being inappropriate with some of our colleagues. What? Don't you work in HR? Just make it go away. Clearing your lateness is one thing, but I would not interfere with any more of your mistakes. Some friend you are. Ever since Marissa left you, I haven't been able to recognize you. Grow up. Get yourself together. Grow up and get yourself together. When I'm CEO of this company, you won't be able to speak to me like that. Is that right? Yes. I'm the boss of this here company. Why don't you get over here and play for the winning team? Excuse me? You heard me sexy. You must be new here, because I've never seen you around. I could get you a nice race if you, uh, if you play nice. My name is Camille, not sexy. You've had too many drinks. You're being completely inappropriate. This is a staff party, but you dress for the club. And I'm the one acting inappropriate. But if you a carpet muncher, just say that. You're disgusting. Actually, my name is Jeremy. But you could call me J Money if you're nasty. You're completely out of line. Now listen, I heard what you're going through, and that's terrible. That's no excuse to be a jerk. Look, you don't know anything about what I'm going through. All you know about is petty staff gossip. You're just another pretty thing in a skirt that Wexler hired for us to look at. Your mouth is digging you into a deeper hole. I'm warning you, Jeremy. <laughs> I like him feisty. What do you say we blow this joint and go have some real fun? I'll make it worth your while. Are you crazy? How dare you? Look. Don't take it personally, baby. It's only business. Ah, Camille. There you are. <laughs> Hello, Jeremy. Uh, Mr. Wexler, uh, I hope you're having a good time at the staff meeting. Mm, yeah. I see you met my daughter, Camille. Daughter? What's wrong, Jeremy? You've gone so pale. You okay? What's going on here? Your VP solicited me for sex and disrespected me. What have you got to say for yourself, Jeremy? Look, sir, she's lying, okay? I had a little bit too much to drink and I, I came up here to be alone. You think I'm gonna take your word for it rather than my daughter? You know, I was willing to be lenient with you if you'd actually confess to it like a man, but <laughs> you're not a man. You're a coward. Sir. Don't! I don't want to hear it. You know, this year, you've lost us the biggest account we had. You're losing your family, and now, you've lost your job. Sir, I need this job. It's all I have. Had. This is the last straw, Jeremy. Now, go and clear out your office, or I'll get security to do it for you. No, I, I know I could get back on track. I'm the best VP this company has ever had. You can't just get rid of me like this. Oh, yes, I can. I've been training Camille to do your job. She has experience, she's got knowledge, and she's got etiquette. A package you could never put together. You're gonna make her VP? I'm the one who gave you 15 years of my life, and I put millions of dollars in your pocket. Get out of my building! Don't take it personal, babe. 
Just business. Everyone must face the consequences of their actions. No one is exempt from karma, so always make sure you're kind to one another. Jeremy lost his job, his family, and everything he owned. Jeremy became homeless and an alcoholic and had to live off trash to survive. But here's what could have happened had Jeremy just made better choices. Is that right? Yeah. I want to be CEO. And you are? <clears throat> I'm Camille. Nice to meet you. I'm Jeremy. So you want to steal Wexler's spot, huh? <laughs> uh, not at all. I, 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 of course not. I, I want to earn it. Um, I've been here for 15 years. It's all I know. Uh, everyone here is pretty much like a family. That's refreshing to hear. But be honest. You want this to yourself, don't you? Not at all. Our employees, they give us soul. And we're doing groundbreaking work here. And everyone's, everyone's reaping the fruits of our labor. I don't know what you've been through, but I hope after working with us, it'll change your perspective. Come here, where you are. Hi. Hi, Jeremy. Mr. Wexler, good to see you, sir. You too. Hope you're having a good time at our staff party. Indeed I am. And I also have some good news. The Richmond Tech deal is approved. All right. Excellent. So Camille will be taking over your role as VP. <laughs> well, I'm glad the Richmond account went through. But I like my position as VP. H have I done something wrong? Not at all. Camille's my daughter. I've been training her up for this position for years. She's got the experience and she could do a great job. Thank you, sir. Um, what does that mean for me exactly? I have a family to feed. You're going to be the CEO of Richmond Tech. <laughs> They're going to give you a handsome salary. Congratulations. You deserve this and more. <laughs> oh my God. Are you serious? Indeed. Thank you, sir. Not at all, sir. Now listen, with Marcus as your VP, the opposition aren't going to stand a chance. <laughs> what? <laughs> and Marcus is my VP? This just keeps getting better. You deserve it. You've worked hard for it. Now, look, take a couple of days paid leave, go and celebrate with your family, and when you get back, we can start to discuss the future. <laughs> you got okay? it, sir. Thank you. Well done. Thank you again. Have a good evening. You too. Can you grab it? The moral of the story is life gets better when you stop being the poison that you want an antidote for.